Welcome to a video I've been itching to create ever since the grand announcement of Ark Survival Ascended back in January of this year. In this video, I'll be offering my thoughts after playing the game for just over a week now, along with some comparisons of the minimum and recommended requirements listed on their Steam page. Before we jump into the analysis with the nerd stats, I just want to share my perspective on early access and the survival genre in general, so bear with me here as I set out my argument. The rise of the survival sandbox saga for me kicked off with the DayZ mod. A zombie survival game that was adapted from the then three-year-old battle simulator known as Armour 2. The mod reached 1 million players in its first four months and was officially released on February 21st, 2013. With hundreds of thousands of people purchasing Armour 2 just to play it in response to its popularity. Nevertheless, it was my first introduction to the survival genre and the idea of being thrown into the open world with no notable objectives or stunted narrative was an experience I, along with many others, simply could not resist sinking hours into. It's this mod, in my humble view, that flung open wide the floodgates for so many early access survival games to release and follow suit. Studio Wildcard, a fledgling indie studio outfit at the time, threw their own take on the survival genre into the ring as they sought to ride the tsunami of early access survival games that poured forth. And on June the 2nd, 2015, Ark released into early access. Fast forward eight years and here we stand with something none of us were expecting. Now, doing YouTube along the years has led me to do Q&A testing with fellow content creators and developers, and it gives me an idea of what it takes to make a good game, and one that I wholeheartedly believe provides me with the capacity to at least hold a Discord with some knowledge on the subject. I can tell you that I'm unapologetically forthright when collaborating with teams I have the privilege to work with, and I hate to dump on people's creative work, but I don't hold back. I guess it was working in the kitchen as a younger lad at top levels that taught me to have a thick skin and I just call out bullshit. For instance, Nightingale. Nightingale, an early access title out in February of next year, is another example of closed beaters I'll be involved with alongside devs and creators. So providing they align with my chosen genre, I will give these games my time. A good portion of these activities you understand can transpire under non-disclosure agreements and I must mention to all my viewers that Wildcard kindly extended an offer roughly two weeks prior to release of the game's launch with a key and I must be transparent that in the past when I've featured early access games I would invariably get the comments like why waste your time on this shit and I understand it's games like Ark Survival Evolved and DayZ standalone that makes them feel like this so I genuinely speaking I do get it. However in the case of Valheim and V Rising you might be the ones missing out and for those of you who do keep requesting that I play them games again on my channel while I might resort to live streaming V Rising because I feel I've reached a point where I can juggle the gameplay and keep up with the chat but these titles really deserve the treatment that only a fully fledged release can provide and without the whole early access headache. So. It's fairly common practice in the realm of content creation for this type of stuff. I wasn't granted any early glimpse or handed a script to Parrot, but given the substantial amounts of time I spend creating content on Ark, it was a nice thought. So thank you, Studio Wildcard. I appreciate it because 40 notes is a lot of money. 40 big ones for what? 12% of a game at the moment? And you could snag yourself not one, but two exceptional early access survival titles right now with Valheim and V Rising both being ready for exploration and both have set a bar for a level of polish I expect when you release a early access survival title. And I have no problem recommending them both. Of course, my whole opening point here is about early access because at the end of the day, this is your release wildcard and it needs to be ready for scrutiny. Otherwise, there's a real danger here that myself and other art content creators start praising an older version of your game over this new one. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm no stranger to what early access can be. And if you can't go through the numerous updates and patches that Ark is going to go through over the next couple of years, then save yourself the headache and wait for it to finish. 
So to begin, let's dive into the results of my GPU tests. When speaking of the recommended settings, I expect to achieve 60 frames a second at least on any main mainstream title with a 3080. Uh, yet what do we find? A mere 30 to 40 frames if we are lucky on a mix of high to epic settings at 1080p. And this is far from acceptable. And to add to insult, here's the kicker. I've observed that my rig is outshining some of those with the mighty 3090s and TI variants. So it becomes very clear that the performance offers vast room for optimization. Now let's turn our attention to the minimum required graphics card for this game, the GTX 1080. On medium settings, I managed to achieve a steady 30 frames a second with volumetric clouds switched off. And in my opinion, this performance surpasses that of my friend's 2070, who struggles to even reach 20 frames a second on medium settings. So what does that tell us? Well, it's actually good news because it signifies that the game is ripe for optimization, providing room for improved performance across a variety of hardware. What surprises me most is when I hear people claiming 30, 40 frames a second on their trusty old 1080 Ti's with medium to high settings. Initially, I thought they were just talking out their ass, but my results actually collaborate that and this game holds substantial potential for optimization. I'm confident that with time, it will indeed reach its full potential. Now, if we just briefly consider the Xbox Series X, if we're feeling generous, it performs at a level similar to the RTX 3060. So Xbox users, you might have to tamper your expectations regarding the game's graphical fidelity. It's more likely to resemble the look of the 1080. Now, I've constantly maintained that the original ARC Survival Evolved isn't particularly demanding on the CPU, and throughout the tests, the AMD Ryzen 3700X was hardly utilized. I'm recording and testing at the same time, and the 2070 setup you're seeing here has the same CPU. So as you can see from the results, it only utilizes around 50% of the CPU's capacity. With the bottleneck for me lying in need of more additional power, it's currently capped at 320 watts for the power draw, but I could push it further, potentially by around 10% before encountering throttling. Uh, this threshold would be reached before the CPU reaches its limits anyway, so I guess what we can discern here is upon reviewing these tests, it's apparent that there's ample room for optimization over the next month. And I'm confident that these numbers will exhibit significant improvement. The results, in my opinion, provide compelling evidence of this potential, but how much we will need to see. So I guess you want my opinion on whether the game is worth getting, and I can tell you it has exceeded my expectations. And I see it becoming the number one game on Steam in time, because it has so much potential. I'm loving the improvements to the map, the building, and I'm definitely gonna be making guides and playthroughs for years to come, probably. There's new physics and quality of life improvements. So if you're new here and you wanna keep up with Arc Ascended content, then consider subscribing. This isn't the usual type of video I make, but I am a fan of Arc. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made hundreds of videos on it. Despite all the negatives here, it's going to be a great game, I feel it, and it's just too soon. You're going to need good specs to enjoy this at the moment, and it's getting optimization improvements every day. But as of today, it's not great, and I'll be surprised if the Xbox can push past the medium settings when it comes out. There are, of course, plenty of bugs that have been showing up creatures dropping through the map and all the usual stuff. I haven't even begun to touch on all of that, but I guess I'll leave you with one final thought and wild card if you are watching. The tech binoculars being unlocked through the Alpha Overseer. Come on, wild card. They should be unlocked through any Gamma boss fight. Otherwise, everyone's just going to use the S Plus Spyglass on private servers. So change that absolutely as soon as possible. It's just an unnecessary grind for stats and uh, the only piece of tech that a player is going to need to build a good army. So don't put it at the end game, put it behind the gamma fight or at least give me the option to change it on my server files. And of course, oh, I haven't even 
I haven't even touched upon servers. Uh, but I think we'll leave it there. I think the, the most important thing was to really kind of just show you some comparisons there. But I really don't know how much good that's going to do because as you can see, the optimization is going to come over time. It, it's happening every every day. So that's it for me on this kind of overview. I mean, I can't really review a game that is in early access. It's going to go through many, many iterations and updates. But uh, as a fan of ARK, honestly, I'm actually pretty happy. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.